2022. The city of Lakeshore. It is late one night in this city when a street racer gets a call from an old friend with a job from a mysterious client calling themselves the Blacklist. I need you to pick up a car. BMW M3 GTR. Silver, blue, big spoiler. Can't miss it. My sources tell me it's at the Rockport Industrial Complex in Edgewood. Get it to me fast, and I'll see your driver gets a decent chunk of change. Word of warning, however. Car's hot. Like, real hot. Watch for the cops. A job. One that this particular driver had done many times before. And this would be the last for quite some time. For them, it was run of the mill, if a bit more risky than usual. But for those of us watching and playing, it was anything but. For this M3 GTR has been seen before. The last time this M3 GTR was seen, it was at the hands of a street racer from Palm City, having just been used in a failed escape attempt by the disgraced and now presumed deceased Lieutenant Frank Mercer. The Lakeshore Kid and their friend Yaz clearly didn't know exactly what they had gotten themselves into. The significance of that car was lost on them. All they really knew was that some guy had been released from jail and wanted that car. It, in fact, it was the first thing they asked for, the moment they had been released from behind bars. The identity of this man is never expressly stated on screen, but it is strongly hinted that the identity of this man is none other than Clarence Razor Callahan, the former number one on the blacklist of Rockport City. That's not to say it's not the most wanted themselves, but more than likely it is Razor. He spent up to 17 years behind bars and still hadn't let go of that car. It seems like it was his way of getting revenge and getting back what he saw as his property. There's just one burning question on my mind that I'm sure is shared by many of you. And that is, why is the M3 GTR in Lakeshore in the first place? Was it stolen again? Sold? Or is that Palm City racer visiting family in Lakeshore? Odd place to visit family at an industrial estate. Well, for starters, the journey isn't impossible. About 1,400 miles separate Miami, Florida and Chicago, Illinois, the basis cities for Palm City and Lakeshore. That journey can be made in the better part of a day, about 20 to 21 hours, if you're lucky with the traffic. So it's certainly possible for the car to have made the journey within three years when it was last seen in Florida. And we are assuming that this is the exact same car first seen on the streets of Rockport all those years ago. There's bound to be a flurry of replicas, some good, some expert, and some pretty badly made. But that's a video in of itself that will come out at some point in the near future. This is unlikely to be a replica, however. Razor wouldn't settle for anything less than the real deal. There's been only one minor modification made to the M3 GTR since it was last seen on the streets of Palm City, and that is the addition of a second seat. The M3 GTR was never designed to have a second seat as stock, being that it was a purpose-built race car for the American Le Mans series. So the second seat 
was presumably added by the Palm City Racer given their close friendship with Anna and Lucas Rivera. However, it could have been added after it parted the company of the Palm City Racer, but we don't know if the Palm City Racer is the person who took the M3 GTR up to Lakeshore in the first place. That is something that is, frankly, a complete mystery. Seeing as the car was found on its own wheels and not on the back of a flatbed truck, it's clearly been driving under its own power for quite some time, regardless of how it got to Lakeshore in the first place, whether driven itself or on the back of said flatbed truck. So this presents us with a number of theories. Theory number one, it was stolen, simple as that, but given how things have turned out in Palm City, in, at least in 2019, it's unlikely that the car was stolen. The police racketeering group was cracked down upon and doesn't exist anymore. That's not to say it wasn't stolen by some mug off the street or another gang stealing cars for profit, but you never know these days. And if it had been stolen by a gang, it probably would have been cut into pieces. No, if this car was stolen, it was stolen because it was this car. Which means it's quite likely it was sold. The Palm City Racer had no real personal attachment to the vehicle, it was just something that had belonged to someone else, the real owner, nowhere to be found. It's indeed quite possible that they were approached by someone who recognised the car, knew what it was worth, and made an offer. Theory number two is about as mundane as it gets, and that's that the Palm City Racer really did drive the M3 GTR all the way to Lakeshore to visit family or something, and then parked it at the Rockport Industrial Complex in Edgewood because they couldn't find parking elsewhere. It could be something as silly as that, though this is Need for Speed. It's more than likely that it's nothing so mundane and silly as that. But what if it is the Palm City Racer? Sure, it could be family, but maybe they heard the, about the racing in Lakeshore and wanted a piece of the pie, and then bit off a bit more than they could chew when they parked the M3 GTR in Edgewood and came back the next day to find it gone. This explanation is quite likely. The Palm City Racer wasn't from Palm City in the first place. They had come from out of town to take part in the Speed Hunters Showdown, the legal daytime street races from Heat. So the Palm City Racer, or I guess the Need for Speed Heat Racer, eventually left Palm City looking for more racing across the country and took the M3 GTR with them, maybe thinking that it was a good luck charm or their most successful car, the best car that they had access to, if we pretend that the Porsche 911 RSR was not as overpowered as it actually was. And so they arrived in Lakeshore only to have the M3 GTR stolen from under them before they could even take part in any races. It seems like the premise of another Need for Speed Most Wanted, and maybe it is, because who knows, maybe the next game could be Need for Speed Razor's Edge. I don't want to call it Most Wanted 2, we already had one, and it wasn't a great game, but who knows, we could see a true sequel to Need for Speed Most Wanted, and see the return of many beloved characters, but Maybe that's just my nostalgia talking. Maybe that's another video I could make, my concept for the next Need for Speed game. But for now, I'm out of theories. I don't have any other potential explanations, but I'd love to hear what your theories are. And maybe I'll debunk them too, like I did in the last video. I'm honestly fed up of hearing that Frank Mercer is the most wanted, 
or Ryan Cooper is the same character from Underground 2 to Pro Street and just no. There is zero evidence supporting any of that. If you have any sane theories for how the M3 GTR got to Lakeshore and perhaps maybe even what Razor plans to do with it now that he's got it back, please leave them in the comments. And while you're at it, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. N no, seriously, it does. It'll help boost my views and enable me to make more of the content that you and I love. There's also my Patreon and my channel membership where you can get my videos at least a week early. If I can remember to do it, that is. <laughs> Knowing my memory, I'll probably forget. <laughs> yeah, that happens. But your support would be greatly appreciated and enable me to make this content. Because my computer is at its limit now. And if I can't get a new PC, I won't be able to play the next Need for Speed. I'm barely able to play this one as it is. But that's all we have time for, folks. Stay tuned for more Need for Speed content in the future. Not a huge amount more, but there is at least one more BMW M3 GTR-centric video in the near future. Stay tuned, and until next time, have a good one, folks, and good night.